Hey guys, what's up? It's me again. It's been a while. It's been like three months since I've actually done a review or any video that wasn't streaming Kingdom Hearts. And I apologize for that. Um, you know, this is the first time in a long time that I've had to apologize for that because I've just been pretty good up until the Final Fantasy XV review um, on making videos. And, um, you know... <laughs> I don't really have much else to say other than it's been kind of difficult to make videos for a while um, just because of things going on in life and hopefully I can try and start to get back on track with that and try to really start making videos again but um you know I can't really reveal too much because it's just it's personal things that have been going on in my life um, but to give you guys a basic idea, it's just been tough between um, school and my two jobs and other other you know other things going on in my life. Um, so much so that it has kind of resulted in a lack of sleep and really not much interest in playing too many video games and reviewing them. And really, you know, it, it's just a tough patch in my life. I'm going to get over it. It's nothing serious. Um, so, I mean, if anyone actually worries about that, thank you, but it's all good. It's just a result of things that have been happening in my life recently. And really, <laughs> right after the Final Fantasy XV review, I wanted to get on reviewing another game, and that game today is Wolfenstein II The New Colossus. I really wanted to, um, but I just, I just didn't feel like it. I didn't feel like I had enough context for it. To give you an idea, it kind of started out as, I'm going to definitely get this game. You know, I know the reception, from what I remember, was a little bit lukewarm on it. And I just really want to play it. You know, I was interested in it, but I'll wait for the Switch version. And then the Switch version came out, and I was playing it. You know, I recorded some footage for it and everything. And I was like, man, this is actually pretty good. What are they, what are people saying? And the main uh, complaint I heard about it was it wasn't as good as Wolfenstein 1. So after completing this game about, I don't know, three or four times at this point, um, on different difficulties, I kind of went over to the PC here, and I loaded up Wolfenstein The New Order. And I guess this is kind of where the review starts, because I've never been a big Wolfenstein fan. Um, I never played the original, uh, just like Doom, actually. I never played the originals of that. I only played 2016's Doom, and it was probably one of my favorite games of all time. But I remember right after Doom, I went straight to Wolfenstein The New Order. I had picked it up on a Steam sale, maybe about three or four months after it came out for like 20 bucks. And, you know, I played it then, and I was kind of lukewarm on it. Actually, if I remember correctly, something was up with the port at first, and it wasn't running correctly on my, um, my PC. And actually, it still has problems. The port has really annoying bugs with, um, you know over 60 hertz monitors, and luckily you're able to fix that, but, but that's besides the point. Um, I went back and played it, and I remember playing it right after I beat Doom, and kind of being lukewarm on the whole, the whole experience. I was skipping all the cutscenes, and I guess I was more or less expecting a Doom experience, when I should have really been paying attention to the story and the characters. And I went back and replayed that, and I'm like, oh wow. That was really damn good. I went back and replayed it recently, I, you know, to give you uh, an idea, it took me roughly 21 hours to beat it, and I, that's because I was taking my time, looking through things, I was having a blast with the game. Um, I actually had more fun playing that than this, and I also kind of, not just because of the game itself, but just because I prefer a mouse and keyboard anyway, so I was already in my comfort zone playing that game. Playing this on a controller, needless to say, isn't as easy. But it made me realize a lot about Wolfenstein 2. And that's that Wolfenstein 2 is still definitely a very good game. But it's odd how it's not better than Wolfenstein 1. And in fact, it actually retracts a lot of the great things that Wolfenstein 1 did. Isn't that odd to think about? Like, a game took away elements of its original version. And that's the thing that really kind of gets on my nerves about the whole Wolfenstein 2 coverage. Now, actually, looking back, the game actually did pretty well critically. At least from what I can see, it was getting 9s and 
9.5s, stuff like that. Um, but among the fan base of this game, there was a lot of tension regarding a lot of what they call SJW propaganda. And let me just get this out of the way right now. I didn't see it in this game, you know. I, also, I saw a lot of that kind of stuff being very jokey. Um, it seems like most of the controversy came from a tweet that they made uh, called hashtag kill Nazis or something like that, and people took that the wrong way. But regardless of that, people really thought that a lot of stuff in this game was like SJW propaganda. Like, the KKK is very much in this game, and they're shown, but I didn't really see it as SJW propaganda. You know, this whole series has always been about rising uh, above, you know, the evil people in this game, and it's it's unapologetically silly about it, too. It's like the Nazis are very much goofy. This takes place in a world where the Nazis won World War II because of a scientist that found ancient technology left by uh, <laughs> a secret... Um, I forget what they're called, but a secret organization of people that held alien technology together. And because of that, they were able to far surpass any technology made in uh, the 40s and 50s and just rose to power and eventually ruled the world. And they have like these gigantic mechanical dogs, they have these gigantic uh, four-legged uh, machines that shoot laser beams at people, they made laser weapons. It's unapologetically silly, right? It's like very steampunk. And I love it for that. The game is just so funny. But for some reason, people thought, you know, because there's a black character in this game and because the, the KKK are in it, and because of, you know, there's actually one character you get at the end of the game that's, a, you know, believes in communist agenda. Um... I guess people saw that as SJW, and I really didn't. And in fact, I actually didn't think the story bothered me all that much in this game. There were things that bothered me, but... And, I, and really, I guess that's the thing I really have to say, is that it feels like all this fan outcry could have gone towards something more productive in talking about this game, because instead of talking about the numerous pacing problems that this game has, or the things that they took away from the gameplay, or the fact that the game clearly doesn't control as well as its original, despite, you know, me playing it on different platforms. No, we have to talk about SJW propaganda. Can't really, you know, <laughs> accept that as a, a good reason, because I just feel like there were more productive ways to critique this game. And, you know, that's the funny thing, too, is, like, I'm usually the first one to go on the bandwagon of, I don't like SJW propaganda and all this other shit, but clearly this game was just trying to be silly about it. I thought it was really funny. <laughs> I thought the story was actually pretty damn good. Now, going back, I actually liked the original game a lot more, but that's just me. So, talking about this game some more, I guess we could start with the story. Um, spoilers for the first one. At the end of it, uh, the main character, William Blaskovich, or as that's the, how, what the Germans call him, but I call him William, um, he ends up blowing himself up at the Nazi Germany uh, base camp uh, of General Death's Head. He was the kind of villain of the last game. And, you know, you're about to fire nukes at the place, it'll put a crippling blow on the Nazis, but you end up surviving, and they, the, you know, rebels of the last game uh, rescue you, and they take you back to your ship, your submarine, and that's where the game kind of begins, where it's like, I think, six or seven months later, something like that, and you're being attacked again by a character from the last game, Frau Angle. She's actually on the cover right here. And in the last game, she, needless to say, holds a very uh, strong grudge against William because um, he not only killed her lover from the first game, uh, what was his name, Booby? <laughs> Something like that. Um, you also uh, defied the Nazi Germany party and literally destroyed one of their biggest camps for technology. And then on top of that, you went into her slave encampment 
and blew half of her face off. Um, so, needless to say, Frau Engel is kind of the main villain of this game. Um, and essentially the game kind of starts from there and goes down this whole narrative path where it's basically you're just trying to uh, beat Frau Engel. And a lot of things happen in that time. One of my first problems with Wolfenstein 2, though, is that for as poorly paced as it is, the game doesn't really ever reach any satisfying conclusion or any climax to where it's like, well, that feels like it kind of ended a little bit too soon. The game actually feels way shorter than the first one. Um, it, it kind of feels like the climax should have been at the end and where there might have been more levels to, to go with that game, right? It felt like there was supposed to be more after that, but no, it just ends, surprisingly, and it's very bizarre how that all comes about. More weird about this game is that it tries really hard to add these newer elements to the game, but it does so in such a poor way that the story really suffers for it, I feel, and honestly, I... I think it more had to do with them putting the story before the gameplay. Because at the beginning of the game, you're in a wheelchair, you eventually get a suit from the last game that another character was wearing. Spoiler alert, she dies. And it's basically keeping you up. Your, your body, after that bomb exploded in the first game, is so damaged that you can't even walk correctly anymore. Your muscles are going through atrophy. Um, even the game tells you this at the beginning where it says, oh, you can only have 50% of your health at all times. Usually it's 100%. And you have to kind of rely on different skills to get past that. Well, in like, I want to say, past the halfway point of the game, you finally, you know, William gets his head chopped off. I won't mince words there. And you get put into a new mechanical body where you can finally have full health and all that other stuff. And it feels like a genuine um, upgrade. But this was way past the halfway point of the game. It's like, really? And overall, it just feels like the story doesn't really do much else. I mean, you recruit a bunch of new characters in the game. And, you know, they have their own little plot points. But none of them really reach an end, in my opinion, to where it's satisfying. In fact, the mission before the very end of the game is you picking up the guy who believes in communism. And that really doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> it's like you just kind of pick him up and he's a character in the game and he's kind of wacky. But nothing really happens with him. And even characters from the older games that I really liked, nothing really sufficient happens with them. Um, now, I should also say that there are kind of two different story paths to take in this game, because in the first game you get to make a choice to save either one of your soldiers or a captain. And depending on who you save depends on kind of how the story goes. It doesn't really change anything significant in the first game. And for the most part, it doesn't really change anything significant in this game. Um, I don't know if you get the choice to import a save file if you played the first one. I haven't played the second one on my PC. And the first one isn't on the Switch. So, unfortunately, I was stuck kind of with having to manually pick. Not that it really matters. Again, it's just a choice. And the story kind of differs from that. And believe it or not, one character, the captain you save in the very first one, I feel has more importance in the first game, but much less significance in the second game. Basically all that happens to him is he gets his arm chopped off and he has a scene with a girl, um, and there's a little bit weirdness made about his new mechanical arm that kind of like fights him. And it was funny, don't get me wrong, but nothing really happens with him. And in this game, it actually happens with the, the private that you save in the first game. He has a lot more potential in this game, and he kind of, in a kind of haphazard way, I should say, um, rises to the occasion and becomes a much more powerful and smarter character for it. And he gets a lot of wacky moments where he's on, like, LSD and stuff like that. I don't know. It was actually really funny. But, um... It doesn't really go anywhere. But I will say, I think Private Wyatt, that's his name, had way more significance in this game, because at the end of the game, he kind of rises to power, and he becomes an important leader in the group, in the Resistance. 
But overall, I would say the story was still good, and it makes me look forward to how Wolfenstein 3 will be, inevitably. Um, but I really hope Wolfenstein 3 goes back to the basics of what made 1 so good, because 1 was so original in amazingly paced, it had an amazing story, and it was funny. And that's not to say that 2 didn't have a great story, too. I still think it did. But, for starters, there were a couple of scenes in this game where it kind of felt like... It kind of felt like they were copying the first game. Like, in the first game, you actually go to the moon, and there's really not that much done with it in the first game. But you also go to Jupiter... <laughs> In, I think it was Jupiter, or was it Mars? It might have been Mars. It was probably Mars. You go to Mars in the second game, and it was basically just a copy and paste level design of the moon landing in the first game. So it kind of just felt odd to me how they just brought that back. It was still a cool level, don't get me wrong, but it, it, it kind of just... It was odd in how it was put in there. And it was just kind of... It, it kind of felt like it was just thrown together. Um... What else was there? Uh, there was the fact that just... If they were going to pull parts from the first game, I wish they did more with it. Um, this game was... It felt more like you were just exploring America. And it was cool. Um, you get to go to Area 51 in the game, and you get to go to... to um, uh, what was... You get to go to New York, which is irradiated, because that's where the bombs dropped there. I'm surprised I didn't find any references to Fallout. I don't know. Um, but overall, it just kind of felt like some parts of the story were a little bit copy and paste because you're, you're still on the basic route of recruiting characters, too. And that was kind of the idea of the first one. But in the first one, it made a lot more sense. You were recruiting resistance fighters that you legitimately needed. And in this game, I mean, I guess to a point you still need them. But it felt a lot less urgent than the first one. And overall, I just felt like the story was poorly paced, and I really felt like it ended on a... Well, I felt like it ended at the climax. I feel like it shouldn't have ended there. It should have gone on for maybe a couple more levels. At least to give the game a little bit more uh, longevity, because this game is not as long as the first one. And, you know, like I said, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, because a longer game might not necessarily be a better one. But in this case, Wolfenstein 1 was better. It had a great story, and it had great pacing. And it was just... I, I urge anyone to go play that game. It's really fun. It's just... It has that Metal Gear kind of mentality where clearly everything is on a... It's pretty cringy. You know, you're going against steampunk Nazis. But it's so much fun, and it, it has a lot of weight to the story, and it's cinematic, and it's fun, and it's... It is stupid, but it's fun. It's really fun, and it's interesting. Um, the second one just doesn't have that as much. And I guess now I'll stop talking about the story, and I'll kind of go to the problems that really plague Wolfenstein 2 overall, and that's just its design and its gameplay. Wolfenstein 2, don't get me wrong, still a really good game. But man, it falls so short compared to uh, Wolfenstein 1. Now, I might have been more forgiving towards Wolfenstein 2. If Dishonored, if it was like Dishonored and Dishonored 2, where they were very much the same game, but Dishonored 2 feels, at least in my opinion, like a different game just because they polished up the problems with that one. They added a couple new powers, not many, but it was still a lot more than, you know, what I was expecting, I guess. And the level design was completely changed. They added new things to the game. It was basically just felt like Dishonored, but better. It felt way more interesting to play. And because of that, Wolfenstein 2 falls flat because not only does it really not add anything to the game, but it takes things away. For instance, <laughs> one thing that really bugs me about this game, the combat in the first one felt like there was a lot of weight to it. Um, whenever you got hit, your camera would move. You couldn't physically feel that you were taking damage. 
In this game, it doesn't feel that way. Before I knew it, all my health was gone to a single enemy. And this wasn't a problem of me playing on different difficulties. I started on normal, I went to hard and very hard, and then I think I played it on very hard again, but I don't remember. That was on all difficulties. That was a problem that obviously got worse as difficulties went on because I would just die so easily because damage was ramped up. But in this game, it just doesn't... The combat doesn't feel like it has any weight. When I'm shooting guns, it doesn't feel like it has any weight. And granted, the first game had a similar problem. You know, there were a lot of bullet-spongy enemies in the first one. But in this game, it feels so much worse. And it got so bad to the point where I had to start developing strategies to not stick my head out too much and to find the cheapest weapons in the game. There's one weapon in the game for the shotgun, and if you shoot it, um, it ricochets bullets everywhere and it does a shit ton of damage, especially to heavy enemies. And of course, you know, I would have to switch off to different uh, weapons just because I would run out of ammo, but that felt like the, the superior strategy in this game. And it and I think that's, like, one of the biggest problems this game has. It's just that when you take damage, you don't flinch as much. You don't feel it as much. And it just feels like your health goes down for no reason. There's no indicator to tell you, hey, you're taking damage. You should back up. There's nothing that really felt like the camera had any weight to it. It felt like the camera felt a little bit too quick. And sure, William would move really fast. But it felt like the level design was kind of at odds with that, too. And that's the other thing, too, is that for all of the improvements I think were made in Wolfenstein 2 in um, level design, I feel like it was a good three or four steps back. Um, I can't say anything else to Wolfenstein 1's effect that it had other than incredible set pieces, because there were some amazing levels in Wolfenstein 1. Um... You know, going from the very first level in the game where you're infiltrating Castle uh, Death's Head, I guess that was what it was called, or unless it was called Castle Wolfenstein, to the bridge scene, I want to say towards the middle of the game, to the part where you're, um, I think it was in Berlin, where you're swinging from a rope, and there's suddenly this part where you're on an airship, and then you swing from a rope down into another building on ground level where you're trying to save your friends. Or the moon landing scene from that too was also incredible. The second game just doesn't have that kind of effect. It, a lot of the, the set pieces and level design feel very basic compared to Wolfenstein 1. And this is again only something I saw going back to Wolfenstein 1. Wolfenstein 2 has interesting set piece areas, I guess. You know, there's that part where you're going through the uh, the tunnel system and you're on that train to go to um, Area uh, 51. And then you go to Area 51 and it looks exactly the same. It's just a cave system. And that's fine and everything, but the levels really... I felt like they didn't do anything with it. Um, there was even this part in uh, New York where you're in the transit system. Again, another cave system. But... You know, the one character says, oh, there are alligators down there, you should probably watch out for them. And I'm like, that's interesting, maybe there'll be something where I kind of have to look into the water to kind of find out what's going on there. Maybe I have to look for alligators, maybe I have to tactically avoid them. And, <laughs> and there, lo and behold, I really only remember one or two set pieces with the alligator that were incredibly... Um, they were just incredibly on rails. There was really nothing... It felt like there was no reason to have them there other than, like, a little jump scare here and there. It was kind of stupid. Um, there was this one part where you go to... I think it was... Alabama, maybe? It probably wasn't, but I don't really remember. But there's a swampy area where you go to... Um, what is it called? New Orleans, that's what it was. And, again, swampy area, much like a tunnel system in New York, much like the outset of New York, not that New York really looked all that different. It was kind of just, again, very apocalyptic city-ish, um, where, you know, nothing is really 
done in that level that's brand new. In fact, it actually rips off a part of Wolfenstein 1 where you have to ride on the back of one of uh, the Nazis' mechanical bulls, or I think it was one of their mechanical dogs, and you get to play the level like that. And that was fun and all. But again, it's a ripoff. It doesn't do anything new with the idea. And that's what a lot of this game felt like. It just... A lot of the level designs weren't as interesting, and they weren't as fun to play, and combat was not rewarding compared to the first one, at least in my opinion, because, again, it, it wasn't as fun. And I'm not to say that wasn't, uh, it wasn't fun, you know, when I was making headshots, when I was um, doing all this stuff, it was fun, but it just didn't feel as good as the first one, it didn't feel as mechanically sound, and... The one thing I really wish they would have improved on from the first one was the stealth. The stealth in this game. Yes, there's stealth sections in this game. There are stealth sections in the first game. And I overall like the stealth sections better in the first one. But the stealth in this game is just not good stealth gameplay. Um, it's very overly punishing, in my opinion. Now, granted, you know, there are some games that are like that. Deus Ex is actually one of those games. If you get caught in that game, you're getting pretty heavily punished. But at least in that game, I feel like I'm being told everything I need to know. At least in that game, I feel like there's a sufficient amount of time for me to recoup uh, for a mistake I might make or an enemy I might not spot. In this game, once you get spotted by an enemy, it's over. And it kind of puts you in just certain sections. Not every section is a stealth section. Not every section can be stealthed. But in this game... Um, normally what happens is there are little alarms that will appear at the top of your screen and it will tell you how far away they are. And those are the commandos of the area. And if you get spotted by any of the enemies, the whole area automatically goes on alert and these commanders can radio for help. So your best bet generally is to go into these stealth sections, take out the commandos and anyone else who's in your way as silently as possible without getting spotted, or else, if you get spotted, you literally have to run to them as quick as you can so that not too many enemies spawn on top of you. And it just feels like it's a good idea, but again, it doesn't really give you enough information. How do I know how far Nazis can look to see me? I really don't know that. Um, it doesn't feel like the game controls well enough, I mean, to, to give you that kind of um, power to just sneak around. Of course, later on... Once you actually get the new body with William, um, you actually get to choose from three different um, options. You can either have these legs that extend you really high up in the air. Um, you can either have uh, something that lets you crawl through really thin air ducts. And I actually don't remember what the other one was. I hmm, Because that's also because I don't think I ever chose it either. Um, I think it might have been an arm power-up, but I don't remember. Um, but that's the thing. It's like, the stealth feels so shoehorned in in this game. There are only very specific moments where I used these sort of mechanics to get around, and it didn't feel like the levels were designed well enough to get around that well. Um, on top of that, I kind of feel like, you know, if an enemy spots you, there should be a moment where they kind of have to radio in, and that should be your cue to go and melee them or shoot them silently or do whatever you need to do before they can radio in. That's what Metal Gear Solid games do. If you have anyone to learn from, it's Metal Gear Solid. And it also feels like you can never, I, I mean, at least to my knowledge, you can't actually outrun anyone, outmaneuver anyone. I think I could think of one time where I outmaneuvered all the enemies, but other than that, once they spotted me, it felt like it was over. It felt like everyone already knew where I always, where I was always. And it was just annoying. <laughs> it came off more as annoying than anything. And of course, I'm not going to give this too much flack because it's just the way I prefer to play games, but playing it on a mouse and keyboard felt way better than playing it on a controller. That just felt like a crutch to me. Um, like I said, I'm not going. That's not a knock against the game. I know I am different from other people because most people can play a game with a controller just fine. I'm just not one of them that can sufficiently aim headshots and stuff like that to do the stealth the way it was meant to be done. And all of this comes to a head. All these problems, I think, come to a head when you figure out that there aren't 
any new weapons in the game. In fact, the game actually, from what I recall, takes weapons away from you. Um, I'm fairly sure in the first one there might have been a rocket-propelled grenade, an RPG you could use. Um, I'm fairly sure there was like a very good sniper you could use. Now granted, there are there, there's a sort of sniper in this game, but it is not the same as the first one. Instead, you get less weapons, but you can actually upgrade them, I feel, a bit more. And really, I also think you can upgrade them in the first one, but it really... In this game, it just feels exactly the same, and in fact, it actually feels a little bit less than what it was in that other game. And I think that's really the problem with Wolfenstein 2 overall. It's that, you know, it has a few general improvements in the game. Um, you know, I feel like in some strange way certain things were improved. Um, overall, I think it feels easier to target certain enemies and stuff like that. I feel like... You know, certain level designs were changed in order to give you a better idea of what you're supposed to do in an area and during the set-piece moments. But it came at a cost, I think, of the game suffering more because it actually has much less. So, in a way, it feels like one step forward and like three or four steps back. And, you know, it all comes to a head, too, where it's like, you find out that they added content to the game for collectibles. And I'm like, okay, so like there's different missions you can do. And then you find out that they're really, they're just going back to other levels, killing a few enemies, enemy hordes, and being done with it. And some of them are like overly hard. And it's literally, it doesn't really get you anything. <laughs> other than maybe a few upgrades here and there. And the way you kind of get upgrades in this game anyway is either to find a weapons case to upgrade that or to play the game itself. So the more stealth kills you get, the better your stealth your uh, stealth skills will become. You know, you'll get more um you'll get more kind of abilities out of that. The more you do combat, you know, landing headshots, doing melee attacks, the better those things will get. So essentially, you're just playing this arbitrarily, not to get a reward out of the level, but to just level up your kind of abilities, which, you, I'll be honest, you don't really need. You could beat the game just fine. I did it four times on each difficulty. Um, so, really, there was no point in doing that. And I honestly thought the process of trying to get to that extra content was friggin' annoying. Because you had to take down... Um, commandos in the game and, you know, steal their, um, I think it was their keychains or something like that, their, you know, uh, what do they call them? Their medals. And you had to put it into a, um, little mini-game in the hub, the main hub of this game. <laughs> and, and then try to, um, solve this really annoying over-convoluted, not over-convoluted, but just annoying puzzle to get there, and then I had to do all that and then go into a level. There was just nothing I that struck me really fun about the whole thing, so I didn't really do it. Um, I actually just played the game. And then on top of that, too, the game tries to give you more incentives to go back to those areas uh, in the game by giving you side quests. The problem is you never know what to do in these side quests. You know, I'm not going to complain about the fact that it doesn't give you any, like, markers to where you need to go, but, like, having some kind of idea of what I need and where I need to go is, like, it's, like, there's parts of the game where you have to find maybe, just as just a random example, Toys for Max, um, Max Haas in the game, and, I mean, you don't have to do it, granted, but you kind of want to do it. It's a side quest, and you never know what kind of reward you might get for that. And, you know, sometimes those rewards are found in the main hub of the game. You just got to explore well enough. That's fine. Whatever. Because the main uh, hub isn't, like, huge or anything like that. But... <laughs> it's, like, the stuff that makes you go to the levels again. And you have absolutely no idea where to find this stuff. It's obnoxious. And it's, like, what if something did tell me we had to go to New York? What part of New York? Because each level is kind of split. 
right? There's one part where you go to New York and you go into the subway station, that's one level. Then you go out to the outskirts of New York, that's another level. You go up to the top of a building in New York, that's a separate level in and of itself. So what part of New York do I need to go to? Do I have to explore all of them? That's a little bit annoying if that's true. It's just all these problems accumulate into a game that, by all intents and purposes, should have been better. You know, they had plenty of time to make this game. The first one came out in like 20, late 2013 or early 2014. There was no reason for this game to be as mediocre as it was. And that's not, again, to say that it's a bad game. I overall still enjoyed it, and I'll overall still and go, go replay the game. But to say it was anywhere on the mark as the first one is a disservice to the first game. And, like I said, there was no reason for it to be like this. They had three, maybe even four years in between all of this this stuff. And it just felt like what we got was something so subpar. And that's such a shame, too, because I think the Wolfenstein game that preceded this one, or, uh, sorry, you know, came before this one, was such a statement on first-person shooters that, to me, that, that game was ambitious, and it, it, you know, they came out with the game and there was no multiplayer in the game. And I think that said a great deal about what Wolfenstein was trying to stand for. They said, we can have a cinematic story in a first-person shooter with, you know, full cinematics and everything. That's done. Because most first-person shooters, when you think about it, don't really do that. N at least not many of them. But this game is also going to have stealth in it, which almost seems unorthodox. And I think for what it's worth, it works decently well in the New Order. It didn't work great or anything, but it worked. And it, this game is going to have a long-running story that you want to care about and you want to replay. And on, to top it all off, it had no multiplayer. <laughs> and to put that in perspective for you, even the Bioshock games, not the first one, but 2 and Infinite, had multiplayer modes shoehorned in in one way or another. Those games were known for their stories, not for the multiplayer. And I just think that every first-person shooter leading up to that felt as if, to sell well, it needed this grand scope multiplayer mode. And even Doom 2016 thought that, mind you. And this game said no to that. And it was just a huge statement on that. And I was just thinking to myself, man, how can they improve on that? And they didn't. And that's the worst part. I don't know if this game was rushed, and I don't know if it was just, you know, it had anything to do with corporate meddling on Bethesda's part. I don't even know if it had anything to do with incompetence. But man, was this a letdown. And again, like I said, that's not to say the game's bad, but it is a little bit, it's, it's actually very disappointing. Um, I still recommend you go pick this game up. Support the developers, they still made a good game in my opinion, but just know what you're getting into, honestly, because this game, it just doesn't shine to the same standards as the previous did. And, like I said, that's kind of a shame. Um, I guess the last thing I could talk about is the port I played, and that's the Switch version. And I have to say that, thank God, a company like Panic Button exists. Because Panic Button have done such an amazing job on the Switch so far. Um, namely with Doom. Doom was a big surprise for me and how well it worked on the Switch and how much fun I still have with it. I want to put this in per into perspective here. I played a couple matches here and there, maybe, maybe a total of two and a half to three hours of the multiplayer in Doom. But everything preceding that was just straight up me playing through the campaign multiple times. And... I think on my Switch, it says I have over 45 hours in the game. So, that should say something. Um, uh, that's just how good that port was. And this is also no exception. Um, the only thing I really noticed was that there's a lot of low-resolution stuff going on here. Um, in fact, there's a specific part of the game, actually, where you meet Hitler. And that, again, going back to the SJW stuff, I don't see it. I think that was hilarious. But um, there's this part 
where you have to read off of a script and you can't see it because the textures are so low and the resolution just doesn't hold a candle to what the HD versions can do. Um, granted, that is a minor overall snag in my opinion compared to the other versions because this game still looks incredible. It's running on lower than lowest settings. Uh, it runs on, and especially in portable mode, it runs at like 360p most of the time, from at least from what I gather. And yet, it's still, it not only performs well, but it still looks great. And really, my only uh, criticism is that there's motion blur in it, and that in itself wouldn't be a problem if you could at least turn it off. And, it, and it's a smeary motion blur. I assume it's to hide some of the other optimizations they made to the game, but it was still a little bit annoying. And uh, one actually improvement they made, and this is from a patch they just released for the game, was that you could actually use motion controls for the game. You could, you know, and, and that's actually a very good idea. The problem with it is, and Doom exact, had the same exact problem, I don't know if they patched that out, but there was this really annoying problem where you couldn't just snap back to the center or anything, so what you'd end up doing is the counter would just go all over the place and you can't really control it that well. Um, they fixed that with a patch. I don't know how, how well it works. I personally don't prefer to use motion controllers if I, if I can't. Um, the audio aim was very sticky in this game, which I also preferred because I just don't like using a controller. Um, but you could turn it off if you want, so that's there. And overall, it was actually a very decent port, I thought. So, Panic Button is also going to be doing the port of Doom Eternal, and I can't... That is the one game in a long time that I'm actually very excited to play. Because I will be getting it on the Switch and the PC. I don't care what anyone says, I know I'll be double dipping. But, that, you know, that game looks so good that... I will be playing it on the go, guarantee you, and I will be playing it on my amazing 165 hertz monitor at max settings, guarantee you. And I have a lot of faith in Panic Button that they'll deliver because they are just that good at porting games. I will also be playing Warframe when that comes to the Switch, uh, if I don't need that stupid online subscription service to play it, that is. Um, as you can hear, my voice is <laughs> very very uh, hoarse right now, just because I'm not used to talking for this long and talking about a game like this. But <clears throat> that was kind of Wolfenstein 2. I would say pick it up, honestly. Um, especially if it's like half off or something, definitely pick it up then. Um, they're supposed to be coming out with an expansion uh, like the New Blood, I think it was called, or the Young Blood or something like that. It was the Old Blood, that's what it was called. They came up with a standalone kind of game Similar to Death of the Outsider from Dishonored 2. Um, so they'll be doing that for this game. You'll be able to play as William's um, two daughters. And I guess I'll pick that up when it comes. I hope maybe it'll come to the Switch, but I guess we'll see. Um, but I really hope that that game, you know, lives up more to what this game provided. Because I think moving forward, whatever happened there this team needs to figure out what they want to do with this. Um, they've already confirmed that Wolfenstein 3 is happening. But I really hope they take the time to improve on what this game kind of set, and I hope it actually in many ways exceeds the first game even. Um, especially if that's maybe the conclusion of the story. Um, but I guess we'll see. I wouldn't mind having more than three Wolfenstein games. This is actually a very fun game, believe it or not. You know, I have some frustrations with it, but it is overall, I think, a very fun game. And I think especially if you're a fan of the first one, you at least owe it to yourself to buy this one and kind of experience more of the story, get that next taste of the game. Just know what you're getting into, right? <laughs> I mean, you'll be able to form your own opinions on it. Um, and obviously, my opinions will not always be the same as yours, you know, Ace Attorney Spirit of Justice exists, and a lot of people love that game. But, uh, yeah. So that was Wolfenstein 2. Um, I don't know exactly what I'm going to review next. I was hopefully thinking of getting back on track of reviewing games that I've kind of played in the past. Um, one game I really wanted to talk about was Danganronpa V3, but I wanted to wait until I had a friend to talk about that game with. Uh, but 
Who knows, I still don't know how I want to do that review. I guess let me know if you guys want me to review anything in particular, mainly something that's come out in the last few years. Um, it could be recently even. Maybe I'll pick it up, play it, or maybe I've already played it, and I just didn't think anyone wanted to talk about it or hear my thoughts on it. But, uh, yeah. And, of course, uh, I am streaming Kingdom Hearts with my friend Frank, uh, if you guys know him from LP Bros when I was back in that. Um, we're playing, we actually plan on playing through the whole Kingdom Hearts series at some point. Um, actually, now we're doing it, so we're actually almost towards the tail end of Kingdom Hearts 1. We've been having some recording issues, we're not entirely sure what's going on, um, but hopefully we can figure that out in the future. But I think it's been very entertaining being able to play that game with him, it's been very fun. And uh, I hope you guys will hopefully join us for that. We try to do it every Saturday at around like 4 or 5 o'clock. And we stream for maybe about two or three hours. And uh, in, this, in this case, our last session was like four hours, but that's besides the point. Seriously, come and join us, and I'd love to talk with you guys streaming, because that streaming is so much easier to set up and get going than talk about this, have to make a thumbnail, you know, edit it together, make sure it renders. It takes a lot less time to just set up a live stream. So, guys... Sorry for the hiatus. I hope everything has been good with you guys. Things have been getting better for me at the very least. Um, if I don't know if anyone can even tell. Uh, probably not because I just always look like this. But I've actually lost uh, like 13 pounds. And um, just because I've been working out. But recently it's just because I've been so stressed out and not eating. It's getting better like I said. Don't have to worry about that. But... I've been trying to lose weight. My goal right now is to try to lose a total of 20 to 30 pounds. Um, right now I'm just going for the straight goal of 20. But that, anyway, I've been rambling on long enough. Thank you guys for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one. And hopefully I can keep on track with this whole review thing again.